Hi, we're in West Kelowna, and we are going to get a sneak peek at Master Gardener Pat Zander's garden. She is going to give us some tips on how to keep a garden alive and well without using too much water. What a beautiful garden, Pat. Can you tell us about some of the plants that you've included in your garden? Well, here's an example. These uh, Semper Vivens, or hens and chicks, they require very little water. I am trying two or three annuals this year to see how they're coping with the low water. And when you say low water, what does that mean to you? Well, I have kept track of the water we've used this year. We've watered this garden 13 times. Do you think soil has something to do with it? Our philosophy is start with the soil. Mm -hmm. Amend the soil with organic matter. That enriches the soil. It makes it more fertile, but it also makes it capable of holding more water. So why do you garden with uh, these principles in mind? Well, I think a sense of responsibility <laughs> as a person on this planet and in the Okanagan. In the early days, water simply was not a concern. There were less people here. We just watered whenever we wanted to. Today, we feel responsible to be a little bit more wise with our water use. Absolutely. As far as using water wisely, I think it's really important not to overuse it when it's available. So we, for the most part in the spring, put the, our watering system through maybe once a week, no more. Okay. The plants may as well get used to living in a dry climate instead right. of pouring water on them and then when the drought comes, they suffer. Right. So training my plants is part of it. Something I've noticed in your garden pad is the lack of lawn. Can you tell us about this type of gardening? Well, if you've been here a couple of years ago, there would have been a lot more lawn. All of this area was lawn. It just became more and more difficult to keep. Would you say your current garden is more work or your previous garden is more work? I would say that we are moving toward less work. There's less water being used, there's less fertilizer being used, and once it's up and running and well mulched, it's really not difficult to keep. Do you think there are any misconceptions when it comes to xeriscaping? The two I run into the most is people think it's a, a few clumps of grass surrounded by yards and yards of gravel. And the other misconception is that it's not colorful. Do you have any advice for people who want to start xeriscaping their lawn? Get rid of the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's xeriscaping your lawn. Incremental. Take one area. That's what we did. We got rid of the lawn, put in the flagstone. Now we're starting to work on this. Hoping in a couple of years this will look quite full and healthy. Pat, what are some good irrigation practices when you're trying to grow vegetables like tomatoes? Well, water at or below the surface, it's less water into the air, more water into the soil where it's needed. You get deeper roots, more access to nutrients, and less water used. Thanks, Pat, for all of your insights and your advice. If you want to learn more about how you can master your garden without using too much water, you can visit makewaterwork.ca for a list of plans and more tips.